Retool is a fast way of building internal tools. Let's say we're Amazon and we want to mark customer orders as gifts. This is a simple app, so we can build it in less than five minutes. First, we want to fetch a list of customers. So we can write a simple query to do that. Select star from users. We can preview the data. And since that looks good, let's add a table to the canvas to display it. When we do this, it helpfully pre-fills the data from our last query. So the table is almost ready to go. Now, we want to search our user list. So let's add a text input for the search box. Searching by first name is easy. So we can give it a label of first name. And we can add Roger as a value. Now we can just modify our query to filter based on search value. So we'll just add a where clause, where first name is like the value of our text input. Now, like all components, the text input has a value property. So we'll just use that. Preview, save. Cool, all looks great so far. Now, because everything inside of these double curly braces in Retool evaluates a JavaScript, we can also add some nice wildcards in here to improve the search experience. Nice. OK, so now that we know what we're looking at, let's just add a title. Uh, text inputs can render as Markdown or HTML, so we can add some basic formatting pretty quickly. Cool. Now we're ready to fetch the customer orders. Uh, so let's add another query. And we can just do something simple like select star from orders, where user ID equals, OK, so the text input had a value property, but tables have a selected row property. So we can just use that in our query here. Table one dot selected row dot data dot ID. And let's just order by ID. OK, nice. So we can just drag on another table, and voila, here are Roger's orders. So let's add another title here so we know whose orders they are. Um, we can just add a text component. And we're also using the selected row property of table one here. So now that we can see these are Roger's orders, let's mark them as gifts. So we already set up an API endpoint for this. Um, so we just need to create an API request. We'll do a put request, actually. Uh, we'll hit the, uh, the orders endpoint um, and pass in the order ID. So in this case, it's table table2.selectedRow.data.id. Then we scroll down to the body. We'll set gift to true. Um, that will mark it as a gift. And then scrolling down a little further, we want to uh, refresh the data in the table after this query runs. So we can add query two here to rerun after query three runs successfully. Now, we want to use a button to trigger this query. So let's drag another button onto the canvas. Uh, we'll give it the text mark as gift, and we'll have it run query three on click. OK, we're almost done. So now we just want our end users to be able to export data for analysis. So we can add another button. Um, let's color this one gray. Uh, we can call it export to CSV. And instead of running a query, we want it to export data. So we can just use query2.data and give it the file name of user data. Cool. Um, now that our app is complete, let's go ahead and enter end user mode. Um, this will let us test out and see what the experience will be like for our end users. Um, they can search. They can mark orders as gifts. They can export the data. Uh, this is the page that our operations or support team will use when they need to do their work for their job. Um, so if we just want to head back to the home page, we can see all of our other apps, as well as manage other features like SSO, auth, permissions, auto logs, and a whole lot more. Thanks for watching.